Hello everyone, I'm Travis, and let's get Wonderlust. In our last video, we went over what we did in La Spezia, Italy, which was going to Cinque Terra National Park to explore the five villages. In this video, we're going to continue our seven-night Mediterranean cruise aboard Symphony of the Seas and talk about what we did in Rome and Naples, Italy. We were just in Rome a few months ago when we were aboard Odyssey of the Seas, but we missed out on a few things that we wanted to do because my luggage got left in Copenhagen, Denmark. The port of Civitavecchia is about an hour away from Rome, and typically you have to take a shuttle from the port to the train station in order to catch the train. For whatever reason, on this day, the port was only running one shuttle bus every, I think, 15 to 20 minutes, which meant after an hour of waiting, we weren't anywhere near the front of the line. A random taxi van driver pulled up alongside the line and said, hey, I'll take the next 10 people for $8 a piece, so we just jumped into that taxi in order to get to the train station as quickly as possible. This was another one of those crazy Roman taxi adventures where you're just happy to get out of the van when you finally get to the train station. We paid about 12 euros per person for two train tickets to get from the Chavetta Vecchia train station all the way to Roma Termini, the main train station inside the city of Rome. The first thing that we wanted to do in Rome was to go to St. Peter's Square and then go inside the chapel since we didn't get to do that last time, but it was about an hour walk from Roma Termini, and by the time that we got there, the lines for the actual chapel were around the block and several hours long. Not having time to wait in that line, we decided to go to lunch, which is another place that we wanted to go, which was Ostera de Fortunata. You've probably seen this restaurant advertised on social media, and we definitely wanted to try it, especially after trying Tonarello the last time that we were in Rome. We got to the restaurant as soon as they were opening, and we got to actually sit at a table where we could watch them make their own pasta. Watching them make the pasta gave it a very rustic feel for this restaurant, kind of felt like watching your grandma make food when you were growing up. We ordered the deep fried rice and beef for our appetizer, and then I had the tagalini for my main, and Nicole had the carbonara. Overall, the food was very good. I would say that Tonarello is actually a tad bit better, but I don't think you can go wrong with going to Ostera di Fortunata as a really good Roman Italian pasta restaurant. From here, we really wanted dessert, so we went to our favorite gelato place inside Rome, which is Quinto Gelateria. Quinto Gelateria is a classic gelato place that actually has the metal tins that they store their gelato in, and for whatever reason, the gelato here is just absolutely incredible. Try the lemon, it's great. The next thing that we wanted to do was to go to the Roman Forum. So we decided to actually walk through all the typical touristy attraction areas that we went to the last time we were in Rome on our way there, starting first with Piazza Navona. After Piazza Navona, we walked through the Pantheon on our way to the Trevi Fountain. Make sure you get to Trevi early in the day because if you go there in mid-afternoon like we did on this day, there are so many people that you can't really have a great time there. The Imperial and Roman Forums straddle the main road that leads to the Colosseum. There is so much cool stuff to see on each side of the road. We suggest starting on one side and checking out the Forum of Augustus and Caesar and going all the way down to the Colosseum and then working your way up the other side and head towards the altar of the Fatherland. The last time that we were in Rome, we actually did a nighttime tour of the Colosseum, which was super cool. If you want to check that out, please watch our Odyssey of the Seas playlist, especially the video of where we describe what we did in the city of Rome before our cruise. When you're at the Colosseum, you need to check out the Constantine Arch, which is right next door, 
It's often overlooked by tourists who are in awe of the Colosseum, but this piece of historical artwork is actually really cool and has a lot of detail from the period that it came from. The Altar of the Fatherland, which is the monument to victory Manuel II, is always awe-inspiring and impressive. Make sure you go inside, it's actually really cool inside as well. We went to a ton of places in the short amount of time that we were actually in the city of Rome. If you didn't want to do an excursion, you definitely have the ability to just do it on your own. Just remember, you're going to be tired and you're going to want to take a nap when you get back to the ship. We paid another 12 euros per person for a train ticket back over Civita Vecchia. And of course, we also had to get in another crazy taxi at the train station there to get back to the cruise port. The cruise port was very busy, so make sure you prepare to wait in line for upwards of an hour just to get back on the ship after your day in Rome. If you didn't know, Rome is actually a port that you can embark on this seven night Mediterranean cruise. You can tell the people who did this by their orange sea pass card. Now let's talk about what we did on our fifth and final port of this seven night Mediterranean cruise, Naples, Italy. The last time that we were in Naples, we actually did an excursion over to Pompeii. This time we wanted to do an excursion over to the Amalfi Coast. We booked this excursion through the Shore Excursions Group website and we spent about $170 per person for the Amalfi Coast Small Group Excursion. On this excursion, they picked us up at the Naples Cruise Terminal in a Mercedes van along with six other people. The first leg of this excursion was the drive from Naples, Italy all the way over to Ravello in the Amalfi Coast area. The drive from Naples, Italy all the way over to Ravello was about an hour long and provided some really excellent views of Mount Vesuvius. The roads through the mountains on the way to the Amalfi Coast reminded me of the roads they would take on the TV show Top Gear. These roads made me really want to be in a sports car and not in the back of a Mercedes tour van. Maybe one day we'll come out here on our own away from a cruise ship and not on an excursion. We'll rent a sports car and I'll take these roads at some high rates of speed. Maybe, maybe not. The first stop on this excursion was the city of Ravello, which is at the top of a mountain overlooking the ocean of the Amalfi Coast. The landscape around the city of Ravello provides some really spectacular and breathtaking views. When we got up to the city of Ravello, we realized that our GoPro battery was dead and we didn't bring any of our spares. So if you're going on vacation, make sure you always pack a couple spare batteries and learn from our mistake. We didn't really have a plan or an idea of things to do in the city of Ravello. So we just kind of walked through some of the narrow passageways and checked out the scenery around the Villa Rufalo. We found one of the prettiest cats we've ever seen. Unfortunately, he wouldn't let us pet him. There are a ton of shops and restaurants and things to do around this area, so make sure you check them out. If you're looking to stay in Ravello, there's a ton of like little boutique hotels as well. Make sure you check it out, do some research. We really enjoyed our time in Ravello. The next stop on our excursion was the actual city of Amalfi.
The drive to Amalfi was about 15 to 20 minutes, and it was on some of the most windy sections of the road on the Amalfi Coast. But let me tell you, when you get to the bottom of the hill in the van parks and you get out and you're greeted with this, it makes you really wonder why you would ever go back to a place like Texas where we live. This was incredible. The sights around the city of Amalfi were just simply breathtaking. Just taking all this in made us want to come here on our own away from an excursion and a cruise ship and just spend a week here just kind of exploring this entire area. I mean just look at it. At this point of the excursion we were pretty hungry so we decided to get food at Cafe Royal. When doing research about Amalfi, we heard that the two things that you need to try were the caprese salads and the gnocchi, and that's exactly what we ordered. We don't typically go to restaurants right on the main tourist areas. We kind of like to go off the beaten path to find the really good stuff. But this meal was excellent. Both the caprese salad and the gnocchi were really, really good. One of the best meals we had on this entire trip. After we ate, we definitely had to do the touristy thing, which was to get some lemon sorbet inside of a lemon, and it was really good. I just wish they gave you more lemon sorbet. Amalfi was incredible. I wish we had more time than the couple hours that we did have to explore this area. We're definitely gonna come back one day, maybe when we're older, I have no clue, but I want to go back to this city and explore the rest of the Amalfi Coast. Definitely made this entire excursion worth it. And the food was excellent, the dessert was excellent, and the sightseeing was excellent. One of our favorite places on the entire planet. Make sure you plan to go to Amalfi when you're in Naples. The next stop on this excursion was the seaside town of Positano. The drive to Positano was long and windy. There was actually some celebrity houses on the way that our tour guide pointed out. It was actually a really pretty drive along the Amalfi Coast. Because traffic was kind of bad on the way to Positano, we didn't actually have a lot of time in the city. Only about 45 minutes before we had to get back into the van to drive back to Naples. In Positano, we actually walked all the way down to the beach and kind of checked it out. We also had some gelato and some of the really good Naples pastries that I cannot pronounce for the life of me. We also spent time going through the shops and exploring the village and the narrow passageways. Just basically relaxed and walked around and kind of checked it out. It was a really cool little town. We prefer Amalfi, but you can't go wrong when you're on the Amalfi Coast and just exploring one of the many villages that are there. Our tour guide for this excursion was really cool. He did an excellent job. I don't remember his name, but he did look like my really good friend, Ed from Orlando, so I'll just call him Italian Eddie. This was by far our favorite excursion that we've ever done on any cruise. We definitely recommend the Amalfi Coast to anybody that is in Naples, Italy, looking for an excursion to do. We had a blast. When we got back to Naples, Italy, after our excursion was over, we decided to go back to our favorite pizza place in Naples and had a really good classic Naples pizza before getting back on the ship. 
It was good. Excellent. Make sure you try pizza in Naples. So that's that. Those were our days in Rome and Naples, Italy. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. And as always, make sure you like and subscribe.